What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Two Feet on the Ground Gravity Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris. Thank you for choosing to tune in today. Folks, today you are going to get some free training that honestly all of us should be paying some money for. Uh, my guest today is Matt Porter. Matt Porter is a Washington State law enforcement officer. He works here in the Pacific Northwest. He's actually a patrol sergeant. He's also served for a number of years on, uh, on a special operations, a SWAT team, and has served in the role as, as a team leader. Uh, the, the way I got connected to Matt is by teaching leadership for the state. And I'm telling you, as a, as a co-instructor with this man, every time I teach with him, he ups my game. Uh, the Not just the, the subjects that we talk about, from emotional intelligence to crucial conversations, these things that apply both in our work life and in our family life, but the depth that he goes into the, the, the instruction, meaning how are other human beings going to process this information? How can we better equip them with it so that they can walk away from the class and be better in all of these roles in life? He's just absolutely remarkable. And I'm excited for you to hear his thoughts on life and on leadership. But before we get into that, I want to talk about a nonprofit. The Behind the Badge Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit here in Washington State that's dedicated to taking care of law enforcement officers and their families. For decades, they've already been doing this. Uh, the part that really connects with my heart is when an officer is murdered in the line of duty, Behind the Badge Foundation steps up and supports that officer's family. Well, right now they are organizing training conferences around the state. And we have one coming here to the Tri-City area, Kennewick, Washington, here September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd. And they're going to be talking about how do we have better conversation, uh, both at work, but, but more importantly, at home, so that we can have a great home life. How do we talk to our kids? How do we talk to our spouse about the things we see, the stresses that we have, I'm super excited about this conference, and the best part about it, folks, it is 100% free to law enforcement officers and their families. There's not a lot of things in this life that are free with no strings attached, but this one is. Go to their website, behindthebadgefoundation.org, sign up for the conference right now. Seating is limited. It's going to be a great conference. Jamie and I are both going to be there. With that, folks, let's jump over to our interview with Matt Porter. Matt Porter, welcome to the Gravity Podcast. Thanks for joining me, brother. Hey, thanks so much, Chris. I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to be here. And I'm excited for us to get into this. Uh, I've already talked about it in the intro, but uh, you and I get the chance to teach from time to time a leadership class together. And I just really enjoy your mindset and, and, and the way you approach life and leadership. So I'm excited to get into some of this. Um, what, uh, what are the big issues that you see going on right now in our society? And I know that's a really, really broad question, but uh, you know, what we're trying to explore here on the podcast is, is how we maintain perspective in life. Uh, how do we not get lost in the noise and the chaos? How do we keep ourselves grounded? So what are some of those big issues that you've seen over the last few years that are affecting just society? as a as a whole yeah i don't think it's uh I, I wish i had some groundbreaking insight for you chris but i i am um i am in the connection camp i, I think there are a lot of people out there who are who are suffering uh from from kind of the chaos that we're seeing in society and i and i really truly believe that connection is the is kind of the antidote to that um <clears throat> so when i think about the, the polarization of, of various uh political groups uh I, I think about people's unwillingness to kind of release some of the things that they've that they're just that they can't let go of they're they're oh, like overconfident like arrogant almost you know like no, nobody's willing to think a fresh thought or listen to a fresh conversation and and you know in, in a word connection in a word connection i think that's one of the the, the tougher things that we have and you know, we're, we're doing it right now. I, I, a lot of times technology gets blamed for the lack of connection, but I'm with Jim Collins, man. I think technology can be an accelerator. I think there's an opportunity to use connection for good. 
uh, yeah. use technology for good. And, and yeah. um, bro, in a word, it's connection. I think that's one of the big challenges is just getting out there and, and, and connecting in any way you can. So, so that's a, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's a simple idea. We need to do a better job of connecting with our neighbors, people we agree with, people we disagree with, yes. connecting with family members. What are some of the hurdles, though, that people face when they go to connect? Because what usually happens right now is we go to connect, someone says something that we disagree with on some of the things you already talked about, on politics, on religion, on whatever, and, and now the, the conversation sideways and we're done. And now we're unfriending each other on social media, not inviting each other to you know, Christmas dinner. Hey man, I, listen, I love a baked ham as much as the next person. So I want to be there for Christmas dinner. If we can, if we can make it happen. Um, <clears throat> you know, boy, I, I, if I got to go, well, number one it is always going to be ego. It's you, you're in the way of the connection. Um, not only are you the most powerful force in that, but you also, and, and the most powerful force in the sense that <clears throat> you have the greatest ability to resist the connection and you have the greatest ability to allow the connection. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's, that's one of the big things that gets in the way. I think there's a ton of distraction in the world. Um, like I said, with the, with the technology piece and, uh, you know, to, to, to put a more fine point on, on the, you're the biggest barrier slash you're also the biggest, um, the biggest advocate for that. I think there's a, a bit of a lack of self-discipline um, and a bit of a, a willing um, folks are always looking for a hack, you know, and, and Hey, listen, man, I'm guilty of this. When I go teach a class, one of the first things I do is I, I tell people, I don't use the H word hack, but I say, you know, you're going to have a protocol protocols take some level of work, but you've got to do the work, yeah. whether it's on yourself or with somebody else as a mentor or whatever it is that you're <clears throat> the the results you're, you're not getting in your life, it's going to require work. You, you, there, nothing in Google is going <laughs> to make it easy on you. Hey, I know that we, we co-teach this, but, but you've broke out and created a curriculum yourself on emotional intelligence. And I've seen that in being a police officer that, that I would say at least 75% of the time or more, when I'm showing up to some kind of emergency, especially if it's neighborhood or family-based, People have lost their stuff, and I'm keeping it somewhat PG there. Uh, th they've lost the, their emotional intelligence, or they never had it in the first place. What? Just talk about that. Unpack the whole idea of emotional intelligence. I realize on a on a leadership level, there's tons of books out there. There's lots of classes being taught on it, but I think it's still somewhat new for folks that aren't diving into that that area. Uh, so just, yeah, unpack emotional intelligence. What is it and what can people do to, to hopefully increase theirs? Okay. Well, first of all, you have to sign up for my, my seven week course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, listen, uh, uh, there's a bunch of different definitions of emotional intelligence, depending on who you subscribe to broadly. It's an understanding of how, um, what are my emotions and how do they affect me and the relationships that I'm in? And it includes when I talk about the relationships that I'm in, understanding your emotions and, and all of the other people that I'm uh, reacting with and to and trying to connect with and just the people around me, right? Mm -hmm. So we always talk about kind of four um, parts of emotional intelligence and that's self-awareness. Like what's going on with me first? Like when I feel something i try and name it right and that's the first thing to move from the first piece of it to move from that really um like fight or flight or freeze response which is a very reptilian response and then let's just name that let's just say this is i'm feeling sad i'm feeling angry i'm feeling happy and then we activate the the um kind of the the newer part of our brain the part of our brain that can can control our body instead of react to um, what's happening inside our brain. So activating that frontal lobe, activating our cognitive yeah. thought. Yeah, the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex to get kind of nerdy on you. But <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a separate part of your brain. It's the newer part of your brain. It's the part of your brain that, that makes humans human. That's where self-concept comes from. And one of the things, you know, this is, a, this is an old school way of, of, of oversimplifying it, but you, you, if you can name it, you can tame it. And 
because of languages in that part of our brain. When I say I'm mad, okay, you can actually look at brain scans and you'll see that when people start to use some level of self-awareness, as simple as just naming the emotion, the part of their, the reptilian part of your brain, the, like the amygdala and so on, it, it, the light that was firing in there goes dimmer. And the part up here that allows us to communicate and connect brightens. There's more activity up there. That self-awareness. And then I go into some self-management. Like what are some self-management strategies? And one of the things we do when, when, when you and I teach, right, we'll talk about, we encourage everybody to do our leadership challenge. Let's drink some water. Let's get some exercise. Let's meditate. Let's pray. Let's, let's use our brain and our body. Let's, let's strengthen that connection. That's where your self-management piece, right? And we often talk about, um, not to go too far down this rabbit hole, but the, the post-traumatic stress and the wellness and, <clears throat> and managing um, these deep-seated emotions. And, and one of the things we're trying to do is, is really facilitate a connection between our brain and our body so we can manage those things. Once I've got my emotions named and I've got them managed and I'm starting to, to work through that stuff for myself, then I'm open to what's going on with you. And I can yeah. start to, you know, and that's when we... Um, I recently worked with our city employees, uh, the civilian employees, not the law enforcement folks on dealing with difficult customers. And, and, you know, we talk a lot about, Hey, active listening is the, is the trick. And I changed that. I changed it to active connection. I thought, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's two ways. It's a two way street. So when we start talking about self-management, self, -management, self uh, I'm sorry, self-awareness, self-management, and then empathy. Empathy is a two-way street. And it's not just, I understand what's going on with you, but there's some connection between the two of us. Uh, and, and then once that's in place, Chris, the last part of emotional intelligence, <clears throat> again, broadly speaking, is the relationship management. Like, where do we go from there? Once we have this back and forth, where are we going together? And again, going back to your first question, you know, what's missing? I, I think that's what's missing is the willingness to develop, even for a moment, a relationship that's meaningful uh, with a stranger, with, a, with um, the, the checker at the grocery store, you know, with your buddy on a podcast, with my children at, yes. at six o'clock after dinner, right? Yes. With my spouse. Oh my gosh. I mean, let's start at home. Let's talk about that. Let's connect with our families at home. Let's have somewhere to land. Like, to your point, let's be grounded. Let's find somewhere to land and be safe because, man, we got to recharge too. Yeah. Wow. I, and I know you have that mantra, words are powerful icons, but you changing that word right there of, of taking it from active listening to active connection just did a big, that was a huge shift in my mind. Active listening, unfortunately, and you know Celeste Headley talks about this in her book, We Need to Talk. She, we, We've been taught these skills of how to pretend we're listening to people of, you know, attending yes. skills says, you yes. know, Oh, well, okay. And, and I love what she says in her YouTube Ted talk of if you're actually listening to people, you don't need to try to show that you're listening to people. It's just going to happen. And so when I hear the word active listening, my brain, even though I am, am really following Celeste Headley's uh, teachings, uh, my brain goes to some of those attending behaviors of nodding my head and verb making verbal acknowledgments from time to time. And, but connection. Wow. Okay. I'm going to connect with this person where I go now is I need to understand why they're upset. I'm seeing an emotion. It looks like anger. It looks like fear. It looks like whatever. I need to figure out why they feel that way. Or is that actually even how they feel? Wow, you look angry. I'm not angry. Oh, I'm okay. It looked angry to me. How are you feeling? Right? It just, it, it's a deeper level. It's going to involve me needing to listen. It's going to involve, and I love the fact that you brought the family into this. It's going to involve me needing to put this down and this down since I, you know, have one for both personal and work. <laughs> disconnect from all of those distractions so that I can actively connect with this human being that I'm occupying the same space with, right? Yes. 
absolutely, brother. Hey, <clears throat> and, and you know I'm a big fan of uh, of Jocko, and he likes to talk about detachment. And boy, is that an important thing, right? So it's funny now that you said that. Like in the context of connecting, we have to detach, but we have a limited capacity. Yeah, that's just the way it is. And sometimes we have to prioritize some things over another. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to forget everything that's going on in my life. But for a second, I can be very intentional about my communication. I can be very intentional about my um, connection. I can be very intentional about my listening, right? That's a pathway to connection. It's not the only one. So awesome. So awesome. And I tell you, when when one of the questions I, I'll ask my wife frequently, because I, I, like you, I have a lot, lot of things going on. And I really uh, try to avoid saying, ah, people, somebody, somebody says, hey, how you doing, Matt? I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. Bro, that's not how I answer that. First of all, if you ask me how I'm going, how I'm doing, I'm going to ask you, which answer do you want? The, the easy one, the get out of jail free court? Or do you want me to answer it? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and you know I'll talk. <clears throat> um. So when I'm looking to, to connect with my wife, one of the things that I'll do before I check in is I'll say, hey, hey babe, I've had a lot going on. I recognize that. I'm working 12-hour shifts. I'm doing some consulting stuff on the side. I'm, I'm taking phone calls. I'm planning the, uh, something over here. I've got this thing going over there. I'm driving the kids around. Honey, have I been present with you? Do you feel like when I'm in the room, I'm in the room? Am I, and, and that her answer to that tells me the level of attention that I have towards her and her in our communication. Am I actively listening? Uh-huh. Oh boy, that sounds horrible, honey. Wow, that must be rough. Or am I connecting? And in my mind, and actually it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm a goofball, but on my PowerPoint slide, it says active listening and it's crossed out and the word connection is in there. I left it in there and crossed it out so that it's a, it's an evolution in the, in the process, right? It's Words are shift. powerful icons. Yeah. yeah it's a shift so I want that shift to be like very blatant. Um, <clears throat> it's wow. just a, it's, it's intent to me. It's also, a, it's a piece of intentionality. So to Celeste Headley's point, you don't have to do all this stuff. If you're actually listening, I think that's brilliant. And now, you know, there's personality types where people just, they're not really interested. Uh, okay. That's fine. You know, I mean, you and I talk about this all the time. I'm an, I'm an introvert. So doing the whole sh 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 song and dance in front of a room is not my natural state, but boy, do I enjoy that. Yeah. And so I can go there, right? If, if my natural tendency is not to really be interested in other people, I'm there, there's still, it's still worth a connection to find somebody. And I'm sure they, that, that everybody has somebody in their life that they need to connect with and they can be more intentional about that, about that connection. Well, that was significant in, in going to our significant others. And that, and this plays out, I think in the, in the home life, it plays out in the, in the workplace, you can go to your work teams and say, have I been, have I been present? Have I been supporting you? Yeah. And am I, when, when you come to me with a problem, with a question, am I present going to our spouses, going to our kids? Hey, when, when you and I hang out, am I, Am I connecting with you? Am I present? I think that's huge. And then being ready for the answer, right? Being ready for our, our loved ones to say, no. Being ready, ready for our folks at work to look at us and go, Sarge, no, you're not. Like, I brought you a problem last week and I told you about it and you haven't followed up with me. The problem isn't solved. And you're like, holy smokes, right? I didn't close that. I didn't close that circle. Well, yeah. Hey, let's talk about feedback for a second. I mean, yeah. You right. want to talk about connection. You want to talk about getting, getting better. Hey, it's possible that you're the one. In fact, I think I would submit it's likely that you're the one that needs to do the most work in your relationship and, and being willing to, and, and I think one of the pathways to, to improvement, uh, is, is through feedback and the, there's two things I think I'll say about this. One is if you believe that that feedback is good for you and that you want it, you're going to get it. So stand by. <laughs> and uh, when I'm working with folks on, on giving and receiving feedback, one of the biggest challenges is, is as you receive that feedback to just 
take that breath and go, because emotions are going to pop up. Take that deep breath and either think it out loud or say it out loud. Thank you. I asked for it. You've given me the thing that I want. Yeah. I mean, literally, if, if on your birthday, on your birthday list, you got the number one thing on your list, would you not be excited about that? Would you not be grateful for that? Thank you. You've given me the thing that I want. And I know it wasn't easy to do. Giving people feedback, particularly feedback about negative behaviors or whatnot. That's not an easy thing. Which brings me kind of to my second point, which is you can set up a, 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 a culture, uh, um, an SOP, uh, whatever you want to call it, where <clears throat> that's just the nature of how we do business. Um, when, when there's a lot of rabbit holes I could go down on feedback. It's one of my favorite topics, but um, in, in the police world, and I think it, it, it plays in the private sector as well, folks want accountability. And I think the, the, the teams that are the highest functioning that have, that people say that's an accountable team, it starts internally, right? So if you and I are internally accountable in, in our relationship or in our work group, people will externally see that and go, no, they're handling their business. I don't have to, they're, they're on top of each other. They're correcting behavior. They're reinforcing behavior. There's this open communication, this open connection. This team is, is really firing and <clears throat> Uh, again, I just, I'm just such a huge fan of feedback, but I think there has to be some um, structure to it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that takes some hard work, but man, I'm just a huge fan of feedback. And boy, do I get a ton of it. <laughs> I get a ton of feedback from my folks and it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I've had, I've had um, some of my uh, work group come to me and, and sit down and very nervously very nervously say, uh, Hey boss, are, are we still doing that feedback thing? <laughs> yeah, brother hit me. What do you got? And then they, they lay it on me and, and boy, I tell you, if you, if you detach for a second, when that ego goes firing off and you take that deep breath and detach and you're like, yeah, whoops, my, my bad. Yeah. Hey, a little bit ago, you had, when we were, we're talking and, and I'm going back to this cause I, I feel like it's a foundational piece with emotional intelligence. You talked about four things. So you talked about being self-aware and self-managing. What were those other two? Is that other aware and other managing, or do you have other words? No, you yeah, typically, sympathy, but... <clears throat> yes, typically the word empathy is, is the word I use because it's a little more common parlance. It's just understanding what's going on with somebody else, understanding their emotions, specifically understanding that uh, when I'm talking self-awareness, uh, I understand what's going on with me. And one of the most important things I can, I can, I can say, Chris, is everyone's just like you too. So you, it, when I understand my emotions or I recognize that I have um, fears and, and desires and wants, and I experience all of these emotions myself, and I recognize that, you're also a human being. You're just like me in that sense. And that the, you're, you're not like an alien species that I don't, uh, that I, that I don't even know where to start. Part of the active connection is go, oh, tell me more, tell me more, Chris, tell me more. Oh, that sounds like fear. And you're like, yes, that's it. And you go, okay, I get that. So that's that empathy piece. And then the, 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 the kind of top tier there is the relationship management. Like, how are we going to, what are we going to, where are we going to go with this? How's it going to influence our, our relationship? And, and to me, that is the, from, from the standpoint of my purpose in life, that's the pinnacle. So if I've done everything else right, I can help to generate an environment where inspiration is a thing. And if I can inspire another person, then that, to, to me, that's the pinnacle of relationship management, that top tier of emotional intelligence. If I can create inspiration in the universe. Wow, what an awesome thing. Yeah. Hey, I see this play out in the workplace. I see people read books, go to leadership conferences, and really try hard to implement these skills in the workplace. But I got to be real with you, brother. When I come home and I'm lazy, like I sit there and teach people how to exercise emotional intelligence, how to lean into tough conversations and have crucial conversations. And, and I understand the principles, but then I get home and it's like, man, sometimes I, well, 
just about any time I have conflict in my home with my daughters, with my wife, I look back on it and I'm like, yep, I wasn't practicing anything that I teach. How can we, and I think this goes, this isn't just for law enforcement professionals. I think this goes across sectors, whether you're in private sector, nonprofit, the stress, you get home and there's that stress of life and of work and the, the refrigerator's broken and you have a busted sprinkler head and it's a hundred degrees outside, right? And you just got all these things. And I just noticed that, that I'm not practicing the same stuff at home that I do at work. How can we be intentional about changing that? Man, I love this boy. I, I wish we had about a week to talk about this. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to one of the earlier things I said, which is it's going to take work. There's nothing I'm going to say where you can say it like a magic word, like a Jedi mind trick. And all of the great things you were doing at work with your full intentionality is magically going to, going to happen at home. Um, I, I would, first of all, I would say, what, what is, how did I arrive at this place where I had a high level of emotional intelligence at work? And then what's similar to that at home? <clears throat> um, and then maybe you need to prioritize. I mean, if I go to work and spend all my energy at work and I come home and I say, boy, my spouse is the most important thing in my, my life, but I have no time, no energy, uh, no self-discipline left to, to really connect with my spouse at home, brother, it's, you need a day off, <laughs> you need a day yeah. off. You need to really focus some of that energy and, and really question the story you're telling yourself. Because I think you have a, a, a potential lack of integrity going on here. My wife is the most important thing, but I have no time for my wife. Mm. It's time to do some more hard work. Now, there's a challenge here too. A couple of, there's a lot of challenges with this. When I talk about the self-discipline piece, the developing good emotional intelligence skills is because your emotions kind of live in your brain to oversimplify. You got to have a healthy brain. And if you're working on, on the base level emotional intelligence stuff, the, the, um, you're, you're getting the nutrition that you need. You're getting the hydration that you need. You're getting the exercise that you need. You're getting the mindfulness practices in there. You're getting your prayer. You're getting, you got, you got those, these, these practices. I, I like, I think I've told you that we've talked about this a bunch. I like to start my day with my morning routine, make that bed, stretch my feet, get my water, get my coffee, get my meditation. And that, uh, that gives me the, the cognitive workout, the emotional workout to get through the rest of the day. And then I just have to, right? So if I'm not doing any of that, I'm not going to have the skills when I get home to make that transition to paying attention to my spouse and put my ego, subordinate my ego so that I can, I can connect with my wife or my children or whoever, my neighbors. <clears throat> so there's that piece. Uh, I mean, start that work early, get that work going, set that base foundation of emotional and cognitive fitness so that you can make the transitions and then make those transitions at, at work. Don't leave it all at work. It, it's totally reasonable, especially, man, we got to change this culture. And I think we're doing a fantastic job. Um, I, I was reading an article the other day by guys like we, the culture in law enforcement is broken. I say, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's changed and it's going to continue. We've already, like the momentum is already moving in, in a much healthier direction. Now it's just a matter of accelerating it. It's not like we have to put this uh, giant ship, hit the brakes on this giant ship. And we've changed course. Yes. Now it's a matter of just accelerating it, brother. Let's just, you know, get on board. Let's go. <clears throat> and to that end, you don't need to be broken to take a sick day. You just need to recognize that you're headed that direction. Yeah. Or just like I wake up in the morning and drink my, my, my 68 ounces of water, you just say, you know, I haven't had a day off in two weeks. I'm working overtime. I just, I'm, whatever the case may be, just say, well, I'm just going to take a day. I'm just going to take a day. Call it a mental health day. Call it a family day. I don't know, but, but take that day off. So you're setting yourself up. For all of this, uh, I, I think there's, especially for, for, um, folks that have a really different role at work where it's easy to get into the strong emotional intelligence at work, right? So I am in a leadership role at work. My job is easier and I get better results when I practice really good emotional intelligence. And when I get home, it's a little different. I'm not the boss. 
I'm part of a team of, of peers, especially when we start talking about my wife, right? We are a team. And one of the things that she and I had this great conversation, um, uh, that's two mornings, maybe two mornings ago, or I, a couple of mornings ago. And I was asking her about um, a new program that I'm, that I'm developing and, and I was getting her input about it. And in the course of this conversation where I'm talking about developing emotional intelligence skills, I said, you know, and she said, honey, you really need to do some of this stuff with the family. And it hit me like, oh my gosh. Like, so the exercises that you and I might do with a class She's like, you could do this with our family. And I was kind of inspired by you. I think it was you and I had talked recently about your family's, like, do you have a family ethos or something like that? Of course, yeah, family core values. Core values, yeah. So we were talking about that. And I thought, when I asked my wife, I go, hey, what do you think our, our family's core values are? And and we talked about, we, we totally stole them from Jocko. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Discipline equals freedom. That's the, that's the family ethos. You get done what you got to get done. You contribute to the family and you're free to do whatever you want. And raising teenagers, that's a really important lesson. To yes. Me, right. So we're, uh, we're having this great conversation. She's, she's giving me these phenomenal ideas about a couple of different things that I'm, that I'm working on. And I said, and she says, you know, I would love for you to do some of this stuff with the family, this emotional intelligence work with the family. And I thought, you know, I'm reluctant to do that. Because I don't want to be, um, I guess I'll use the word proselytizing. Does that make sense, Chris? I don't want to be talking to my family. I don't, as much as I love a whiteboard, I think you can see one in the background. I don't want to give my white, get my whiteboard out and start giving my family a class on emotional intelligence. All right, everyone sit down. Yeah, We're going everyone. to have a mandatory family meeting for the next 90 minutes. I will give you scheduled breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Bathrooms to the left. Possibly. Coffee's in the back. <clears throat> if any, you're all grown ups, if you need to use the bathroom, go right ahead. Yeah. So I, <laughs> it was pretty funny. She says, let's do, do, you need to do more of this at home. And I thought, holy, again, in the, it, that was great feedback for me. It was great feedback for me. And, and if you think about it, it, the feedback, one way to hear that feedback is you're a, you're a better leader at work than you are at home. Okay. I mean, it depends on your confirmation bias, and I, but I was like, okay, yeah, that's, that's true. And the other part of me is looking at all is my past and, um, my, my dad is one of my mentors. He's one of my heroes and he did a lot of the work that you and I are doing. And sometimes he would come home and continue to do that work. And I'd be like, dad, um, you don't need to be a facilitator right now. I, I can we just go throw a baseball in the yard? <laughs> And you know, when I had that conversation with him, when I was like 30 years old, like, I wish I had had that conversation. I had initiated that conversation with him early and he's, he's brilliant. Again, he's my hero when we have this. And now the fun stuff is we get to talk about, you know, I've come full circle and fun for us is talking about the conversations like this. Yeah. Uh, so I have this reluctance sometime to come home and do all of the stuff that's been at work and is building those relationships because sometimes I feel like. I should be someone else at home or I'm not being a father or I'm being overbearing or, or whatever, because it's such, it's such, it's so much a part of my identity at work. Yeah. Of being this like emotionally intelligent leader, but I got to be an emotionally intelligent leader at home. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. And here's the thing too, that go, that comes across my mind. Um, I'm, I'm my, my worst critic. I'm going to beat myself up as a father, as a husband, because I'm fully aware of my failures. Now, I'm not always fully aware of them in the moment, meaning I, that feedback is, is really critical. But, but especially my big failures, when I lose my patience, I scream at the kids when they don't deserve that, right? It's not you know, to save life and limb. And that's why I'm screaming, don't run in the street. Here right. comes a car. Um, and, and so I'm beating myself up. And so there's, there's this constant balance that I'm trying to strike of setting high expectations for myself as a father, as a husband, as a leader at work, but then also giving myself that grace. And I, I get back to the words of, of someone that was in one of our classes. I can't remember if I was co-teaching this class with you or not, but her name was Jen Ortiz, WSP, and her mantra is just don't suck. So set high goals, know that you got to be great at this, put forth the effort, step out there into the arena and, and, and try to be a great 
husband, try to be a great wife, try to be a great mom, dad, all these roles that we play, right? These hats that we wear. And then when you fall, when we fail, get back up, take a deep breath. All right. Hey, I didn't suck. I, I tripped up. I didn't do it as good as I could have done it, but I, I didn't suck. And so I'm going to keep trying. I don't know. I feel like folks need to hear that a little bit too. Just that, that, Hey, just get out there. Just don't suck. Try fail, get back up, do it again. I think our kids are going to learn more from us, watching us fail in front of them, watching us yell at them, stop, recognize our failure, look them in the eye and say, Hey, that was inappropriate for dad to yell at you there. Yes. Uh, I, I had a rough day at work, but that's not an excuse. I love you. Will you please forgive me for yelling at you? And, and hopefully we're teaching our kids how to right their wrongs, right? And how to, how to sit there and reconcile with other human beings. And then we move forward in a relationship. And I think it gets back to what you said at the beginning, connection, right? Actively connecting with other people. We're going to mess it up. It's going to be ugly sometimes. It's going to get messy. But then what do we do once, it, once it's messy? How do we fix that? Well, it's the work is always worth it. It's yes. always, that kind of work is always worth it. And I, I had this wonderful conversation with my youngest. She's 12 the other night. And I was struggling. I am, I'm currently struggling with my babies aren't babies anymore. Yeah. Man, it, it's really, it's really incredibly challenging. And any, any parents who are currently or, 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 formerly raising teenagers can I'm sure appreciate the evolution that's involved. <clears throat> and, um, we had a conversation like that and, and it was, you know, that open hearted, I'm doing the best I can. And we will be talking about our relationship like this. And some of these conversations are going to be, they're going to be tough and I'm yeah, not always yeah. going to be right. And, um, particularly, I think you said it, like it's, we're not crossing the street here and you're about to get hit by a car. I'm not going to, if I yelled at you for anything else, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and I think that if we can teach at teach and model, because sometimes kids get sick of teaching. Sometimes our subordinates get sick of us teaching all the time. Like, Hey boss, can't we just throw a baseball? Can't we just uh -huh. go have some fun at work? Can't we just model some of these other behaviors? And I think whether you're, or you're talking to your kids or your spouse, brother with your spouse, please play with your spouse. Don't just, it doesn't have to be work all the time. The work can be, the work can be fun, right? You can get a workout, yes. do something fun together. And particularly with our, our young folks and our people at work, modeling the, the behavior, the emotional intelligence behavior that we want without actually calling it what it is and making a seminar out of it. I think that's a, a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And, and that was the takeaway with my daughter the other night, just honey, we're going to work on a relationship and that's just how we're, that's how we're going to live together. I love it. Yeah. Hey, I know you follow the mantra leaders read, uh, what, what are you currently reading or what did you just get done reading? I just, uh, I actually have them up here somewhere. I just finished reading. I'm late to the Adam Grant party. Oh, here we go. I'm late to the Adam Grant party. Uh, I just finished uh, Think Again. Woo. Okay. On par with Simon Sinek's Infinite Game blew my mind. Uh, he, he, uh, I got my new definition of, of uh, humility out of that book. Um, just finished that. I'll be posting that on my various social medias. And then I started this morning, Gilmore Crosby's uh, fight, flight, or freeze. It's, you know, it's an emotional intelligence book. Uh, always trying to stay sharp on that, right? That's, that's my jam and it's my passion. So that's, those are the two that I'm reading right now. Just finished and just started. Hey, I love it. Hey, we're going to be wrapping up here in a second, but we have only hit the tip of the iceberg brother, honestly. And so if, if folks want to follow uh, more of what you're doing and some of your, your mindset and life and leadership, what's the best way for folks to follow you? Is it on LinkedIn or something different? Uh, you know, I haven't got a ton of connections through LinkedIn. I'm a huge fan of, of LinkedIn. Um, it's only, I don't post any real like social media -y stuff. It's for networking and for connecting. And, and it has been, it has, it has saved people's lives and careers, their, their willingness to connect with me and do some work. So I am a huge LinkedIn fan, getting great results there. 
P Matty P P M A T T Y P is my Instagram. That's typically all of my, whatever book I'm reading, it goes on there. I get a lot of questions about, uh, what, what book are you reading now? What was your reading list? It's, it's on there. Those are the two easiest ways to kind of track what I'm doing. I love it. Well, brother, time is my greatest commodity. I can't make more of it. Thank you for both the time that you've spent with me right now, but then even more so brother, just our friendship and the time that you give me in, in sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It's uh, been an absolute blessing uh, developing a relationship with you. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here. And listeners, go ahead and look down in the comments of the podcast, whether you're consuming this on YouTube or one of the podcast platforms, uh, Matt's links are going to be down there. Everyone take care of each other. God bless. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, what did you think of Matt Porter? Man, I just, I get energized every time I talk to this guy. He gives me something else to chew on, another way for me to improve in my home life or at work. I really love the shift that he did there from active listening to active connection, connecting with other people. Uh, the difference for me is, is, am I actually connecting with another person? I can be demonstrating active listening skills, but be mentally somewhere completely different and not even be present in the room with the person that I'm sitting across from. Folks, I want to hear from you. Jamie and I want to know how we're doing. There's different ways you can communicate back to us. If you're consuming this on YouTube or Apple or Spotify, you can either give us a thumbs up or you can rate and review us. Both on Apple and Spotify, there's a five-star system. We'd really appreciate a five-star rating. It'll increase our viewability on those platforms. However, folks, if we haven't earned five stars, they're your stars. Keep your stars. Instead, shoot me an email at chris at gravityct.com. Let us know how we can make it better. Maybe future Mar Marriage Monday topics or guests for me to interview. Folks, we only get to live this life once. Go out and take care of the people in your tribe. Take care. God bless. <laughs>